Hello everyone, and welcome to the weird, scary, and horrible parts of humanity. Today we are exploring the kidnapping of South Korean missionaries in war-torn Afghanistan in 2007. On the 11th of September 2001, four passenger aircraft were hijacked. Two were flown into the World Trade Center, which collapsed. One was flown into the Pentagon, and a fourth plane, United 93, which was intended to be flown into the Pentagon, crashed into Stony Creek Township after its passengers overcame the hijackers. An estimated 2,977 people were killed with 19 terrorists killed who were acting under Al-Qaeda, controlled by Osama bin Laden, which ruled Afghanistan at the time. Perhaps CBS news anchor Dan Rather put it best in stating, you will remember this day as long as you live. This resulted in America and her allies invading Afghanistan on the 7th of October 2001 as part of Operation Enduring Freedom. By December 2001, the Taliban was mostly defeated, but the unstable country still found itself in the midst of a civil war. 2007 was one of the deadliest years of the Afghan civil war, with 7,700 people killed, including 1,019 Afghan policemen, 4,478 militants, 1,980 civilians, and 232 foreign soldiers. On the 13th of July 2007, 20 evangelical Christians, 16 men and 7 women, of the Seong Nam Budang Foundation Church in Bai Hong Kyu Gyeonggi Province travelled to Afghanistan, arriving on the 14th of July via Beijing and Dubai with the aim of preaching Christianity as well as to undertake volunteer work. South Korea has the second largest group of proselytizers after the United States of America, with around 13,000 South Korean Christian missionaries around the world. An estimated 29% of South Koreans are Christian. Having undertaken volunteer work at Hella Hospital in Kandahar, the 20 individuals boarded a bus to Grace Spring at Kindergarten on the 21st of July. The driver allowed two men to board, who started shooting, with the driver ordered to pull over. Taliban militants then kidnapped the 20 South Korean missionaries along with their free guides. The families held a press conference at Springwater Church criticising the South Korean government for the ease at which it was dealing with the situation as well as demanding the immediate withdrawal of South Korean troops from Afghanistan. The Taliban demanded that the United States and Afghan government, with whom South Korea was fighting, release 23 prisoners with the immediate withdrawal of South Korea's 200 troops in Afghanistan in exchange for the missionaries with a deadline of the 21st of July. With a South Korean government task force arriving in Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, on the 22nd of July, the Taliban extended the deadline to the 24th of July. The Taliban offered telephone calls with the hostages if the South Korean government paid $100,000, but the South Korean government refused. The hostages were originally kept in cells, but after six days were separated into groups of three or four and kept on the move, leading to disorientation. On the 25th of July, 42-year-old Bae hyung gu the associate pastor and youth pastor at the Korean Welfare Foundation, as well as the leader of the group, was killed. His death was reported by the Qatari state media organization Al Jazeera and confirmed by the South Korean government on the 26th of July. 32-year-old hostage Lim hyung ju gave an interview to CBS News on the 25th of July, noting that she was in a terrible situation asking for the South Korean government and international community to do more to help her and her fellow missionaries. The Taliban once again extended the deadline to the 27th of July and then extended the deadline on the 29th of July to the 30th of July. On the 29th of July, the Taliban told the media that the Korean hostages were distributed across three Afghan states with 34 provinces across the country and noted that they were in poor conditions. By the 30th of July, the deadline had once again passed. The Taliban murdered 39-year-old Shim Song Min, who was killed with an AK-47. Bae hyong body was returned to the Incheon Airport, the main airport in Seoul, on the same day, but his family refused to perform a funeral until all other missionaries had been returned. 
The Budang Spring Water Church was significantly criticized for allowing missionaries to travel to Afghanistan, with Pastor Park Ong Jo apologizing and stopping all volunteer work in Afghanistan on the 23rd of July. A second apology was issued on the 1st of August. In a unique night sign of solidarity with its southern neighbors and enemies, the North Korean government demanded a release of the hostages on August the 1st. On the 3rd of August, the South Korean government commenced direct negotiations with the Taliban with face-to-face -face negotiations commencing on the 10th of August. This was preceded by the release of eight Taliban prisoners on the 9th of August. On the 13th of August, two sick female hostages, Kim jong Ja and Kim ji Na, were released in a goodwill gesture, returning to Incheon Airport on the 17th of August and immediately admitted to the ROK Capital Hospital. On the 18th of August, the Taliban threatened to kill the remaining 19 hostages over failing negotiations. Indonesia started intervening as a neutral Islamic government under President Susilo Bamban Yudhoyono. By the 28th of August, all three parties, South Korea, Indonesia and the Taliban, agreed that South Korea would withdraw its 200 non-combat troops within the year, which was carried out at the end of 2007 and suspended missionary work in Afghanistan. In response, on the 29th of August, 12 hostages were released, with the remaining 7 released on the 30th of August, with all 19 returning to Incheon Airport on September the 2nd. The hostages apologized for the trouble and problems that they had caused upon their return to South Korea. The Budang Springwater Church noted that the South Korean media had misinterpreted their response and did not understand the history of Protestantization. On September the 8th, Bae Hyung Gyo's funeral took place. In December 2009, the South Korean Defense Minister Kim tae yong announced that 350 South Korean troops would return to Afghanistan to protect the South Korean civilian engineers working on reconstruction in the country, but would not engage in fighting. Based in the Parwan province, just north of Kabul, the contingent returned on the 1st of July 2010. These troops remained active until June 2014. Of the 5,082 South Korean soldiers deployed in Afghanistan since December 2001, two were killed and one was wounded. Families of the deceased missionaries filed a lawsuit on the 27th of July 2010 against the Afghan government for 350 million won, or about $300,000, which was dismissed on the 26th of April 2011. All of the surviving missionaries remained close to the church and continued to attend the Sayamul Presbyterian Church in Bundang. In 2017, during the Bridge Conference, they told evangelical American author Francis Chan that they wished that they were still imprisoned by the Taliban as while there they felt the presence of Jesus Christ and closer to God than they ever had. Thank you for watching. Please do yourself a favor and hit that like and subscribe button and the bell icon to inform you when new videos come out. It helps more than you know and your support is truly appreciated. You'll also be seeing two other videos for you to check out. Until next time, stay awesome, stay classy, be kind to everyone you meet and have an amazing day.